Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the new triplanar mapping in Moto 16.1. This is in beta right now. You can get it from the Foundry website. It's an open beta or it's gonna be out in a couple of weeks. So it's a pretty powerful new feature. A lot of other programs have this. It's really good and really important that this is in Moto now and it's super useful. So to show it off, I've got a Taurus here and I've got a UV map selected and I've got the Taurus uh, gr uh, group here and the shader tree selected. And the reason I'm selecting all these things is I'm gonna load a PBR texture first to show you the UV mapping and then we're gonna change that to triplanar mapping. So I'm gonna click my little um, load PBR button here. And, but in fact, I'm not gonna click load PBR. I'm gonna click load single with effect. I think that's actually a more uh, useful uh, command. When you just do load PBR, it'll load all the PBR images in a directory. So it's gonna load you know, roughness and gloss. It's gonna load displacements if, if it's in there. It's gonna load cavity. It's gonna load ambient occlusion. It's gonna load whatever's in that folder, which is usually a little much. So I'm just gonna load a few maps. So I'm gonna click load single with effect. Then I'll just navigate to my Quixel folder here. I'll take a, maybe a rock rough. Let's see what this one looks like. I usually click the preview button. Okay, that'll work. So I think I just need the albedo map, the normal map, and the roughness map. I think those three will do it. Click all three, puts a folder in there, and it puts all three maps in there. You'll notice the roughness and normal and diffuse are taken from the file name. So it's all looking good. And you'll see it's all set to UV as well because I had that UV map selected. So if I select the shared texture locator, and it's important that it's shared because all the images use just the same single texture locator. So if you change that, it changes all of the images in that PBR texture. It's kind of the point of PBR textures, right? They all match up, they're, all, they're meant to be used together. And this is used the UV map. And we see that there's some stretching on that UV. There's no tiles or no seams because it's a seamless image, but there is some stretching on it. And so to get rid of that, we can mess around with the UV map or the tiling or we could just switch it to the new triplanar map. So under projection type, just go down to triplanar projection and boom, there it is. Now you have to be in the advanced viewport to see it. Let me just close that window right there. Uh, it won't show up in default, so make sure you're in advanced. And yeah, so if you wanna change the scale, I'm just gonna select all three scale uh, channels and press C for channel hall and just click and drag, right? There you go. Now you'll see some interesting things happening when it's moving. You'll see some seams. You can kind of see them right here. You see one on Y. And then right here on the z-axis, you'll see one sort of crisscrossing here on z. And that's the whole beauty of triplanars. It just maps on x, y, z, and it has a little blending channel between them. So up here, you see this blending hardness. I'm just going to right click and swipe left, right on there to add it to my Omni Hall. And then when I right click on blending hardness, I can adjust that and kind of see that happening. In fact, if I zoom in really close and make it hard, you'll just see a seam there. And then if I go to the left, it'll be nice and smooth and smooth out like that. So we just click and drag to get the scale you want and click and drag to get the sort of blending you want. And there you go, real easy. See if channel hall off and we've got a nice rocky torus. So let's take a look at the same thing, but with a mechanical or hard surface part. It's a little bit more useful even there, in fact. So let me turn on my mechanical part and turn off my torus there. And in this case, I'm going to, I have a map here already, or a mask in the shader tree already. And I'm going to drag an image in. So I've got this image right here. Now, if I have this button selected, um, auto set layer effects, this was in the previous release, it'll automatically, it'll look at the, 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 the file name of the texture. And if it has the word, like this one says roughness on it right here, roughness, is this going to make that a roughness, uh, apply to the roughness channel automatically, which is really nice. Of course, you can't really see it in the advanced viewport, so I'm gonna change this back to uh, diffuse color just so we can get a better look at it. Now, the thing with a um, mechanical part like this is UV seams really become an issue. Anytime, you know, you can see this is probably Atlas mapped. It has a UV map and it's, it's you know, pretty nice, but, you know, there's seams all over the place, right? There's one right here, there's one right here. They're just, you know, they're just everywhere. And so on mechanical parts, this uh, triplanar mapping is also super useful. So I'm just going to select my texture locator, change it to triplanar, and then I'm just going to do my channel hauling to select um, both the size and uh, the blending hardness. So 
just click and drag till we get this, you know, stain or roughness texture, however, you know, big or small you want it, something like this. And on this mechanical part, like the blending isn't going to be quite as obvious. If I start dragging back and forth with my right, you can see the blending little slider here going back and forth. And you can see it going back and forth over here in, in the, the properties panel. But it's just, you know, it's a little noticeable kind of like right here. In fact, you can, it's really noticeable here. You see this UV, this edge right here that you would have with like UV mapping? You can blend it right out of existence with triplanar mapping. Really nice. So... That looks good. Let's make a layered material just to kind of finish this up, which means I'm going to take my part here. Let's make it metallic. So diffuse amount to zero and reflection to 100%. And let's change this map back to uh, roughness, which is what it's really meant to be. And you can see the sort of you know, roughness going on there. Now, Advanced Viewport does a decent job with roughness, but of course that's going to look better ray traced in the final render. And then I'm going to, again, select my uh, mask here and go up here. I'm going to load single with effect. I'm going to navigate to a folder, maybe a metal uh, rusty folder. So let me see if I can find something like that. Metal treated, metal rusty. So maybe something here. I usually look at the little... Um, preview image that Quixel downloads into your directory to get an idea of what it looks like. That looks good to me. So I'll grab the albedo and I'll grab the normal and I'll grab the roughness. I think that's kind of all I need for this one. Close that. And so it's going to stick them all in there. Now I want a, another material to blend in because a rusty material isn't going to be 100% reflective like a metal a metallic material. So just add a standard moto material in there. Just make sure the maps are above it. And so there's our rusty map looking pretty good. Let me actually up the gamma of um, this map just a little bit. It's a little bit dark, maybe 1.5 or so. See it a little bit better in the viewport. Now, again, I just need to select one texture locator because if I click these, you'll see they all share one. And I'm just going to, again, I'm going to change that from solid to triplanar. Looking good. And then I can adjust my, again, scale here. Probably going to go this direction to get a little more detail in my rust and then I just need to blend these two groups together right my rust with my metallic and so what I'll do is I've got an image already here that's baked out this is uh somewhere here we have triplanar bake so this is just a curvature um uh bake of the curvature which you can get from the occlusion node it's just much faster to bake these out than render out um use the occlusion node to calculate the curvatures in real time I'll just drag this on top here like that. It defaults to diffuse color. We just want to make sure it's set to UV, which it is. And right click, go to shader control and group mask. And you're going to group mask between them. I'll just turn off my wireframes there. I'm actually going to invert that. Looks a little better. So yeah, so I've got a little bit of a uh, rust blended in and uh, my edges are still pretty metallic from the curvature shader. And we'll call that, get rid of that panel. Call that a day. So triplanar mapping in Moto 16.1, long time coming. Uh, but it looks great in advanced viewport. Advanced viewport is um, should be really the main viewport now. We're finally gotten to the point where the advanced viewport has been is, is caught up and can be used as your main modeling and texturing viewport. It does a really good job of, of translating the shader tree right into um, the viewport, including things like triplanar mapping, gradients, uh, group masks, things like that. So there we go. Yum, yum.